Sonos music streaming systems are arguably and reputably one of, if not the best, multi-room music streaming system available on the market to date. The only problem is, they don't sound very good. So what do you do if you want both incredibly easy usability and rich and engaging musical performance? Spend a boatload of money, of course. Obviously the only way to get the Sonos ecosystem and user experience is to have a Sonos product and a great way to start to make it sound really high end will be to plug it into a really high end sound system. I plugged a Sonos port with the included RCA cables that came free in the box into a hi-fi system worth roughly somewhere between $150 and $200,000 and sure it sounded great, but could it be better? Step 1. Replace the DAC. The DAC is the digital to analog converter. It essentially takes the digital signal that comes down from the internet and converts that into an analog signal that we can then send to our amplifier over RCA cables. So rather than using the free one that is built straight into the Sonos port, why don't we use, I don't know, a $15,000 Accuphase DC37 with a $7,935 digital coax cable, $16,500 XLR interconnects, and a $6,525 power cable. That's a $45,960 upgrade. Let's see what we can do to the sound of our $799 port. So just a bit about the system just before we start. Obviously you know we're using the Sonos port as the source, $799 music streamer. The interconnect that we're using is just the RCA cable that comes in the box with the Sonos port. That's going straight into the Accuphase E800 uh, integrated amplifier. And we're also using the A48 power amplifier to power these beautiful Sonos Fabric or Criminis speakers. Power supply is just the one that comes with it in the box and I am using a Dynamix Cat6 patch lead for plugging it into the ethernet. So we're gonna have a listen to a song and then the first thing I'm going to change is the DAC and then we'll have a listen to that same song again and tell you our thoughts. What do you reckon? Wow, it's a pretty big change. <laughs> there's, a lot more, there's a lot more presence with the system and you can actually start to follow all the individual lines of yeah. the instruments and it actually started to sound a lot more musical. Yeah. It was very flat and boring, uninteresting before. Now it's starting to sound like a hi-fi system. Yeah, it, it, all the elements had like an element of realism to them, like the, yeah. the clap, the guitar, his voice, they all had, an, uh, they all had depth to them, mm. so they sounded like a real thing. Well, that's a pretty major it change. It doesn't sound like a Sonos port anymore. No, exactly. It sounds starting to sound closer to a CD player, as we would often say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that went pretty well, but what's next? Well, how about where the music came from? The internet. Rather than using a cheap $30 Ethernet lead, like most people would, why don't we use a couple of $6,240 Ethernet leads and a $5,500 network switch to clean up that incoming signal coming from the internet. A modest $17,980 of upgrades should make some nice improvements. Let's see how it went. We've got a Ethernet cable going from the wall into the switch, and then the same Ethernet cable is now going to go into the Sonos port. Well, my goodness. Just even more, even more real again, like an element of musicality came out, started to sound less digital. Yeah, it's like the DAC had been lifted up in performance, almost as much difference as the DAC. The big thing I noticed sonically is actually the bass extension. Mm, yes. And it had a lot more drive and punch to that as well, and there's a lot more separation around the instruments. Yeah. It's uh, quite significant, and it's quite interesting how just changing a couple of internet cables can really make, and obviously mm. putting the CUNY in there, has a different perspective on the sound. Yeah. I, for, yeah. for me, it gave it a lot more um, three-dimensionality. Mm. Like, each element had a different position further back yeah. um, in the song, and I don't know, all the elements were just a bit more tangible and separated. They weren't sort of blurred together in one yeah. big mess. They separated out nicely so you could pick everything up. Yeah, and there's that, definitely a lot more pitch and control, and you know, how you, you could hear how they were playing it a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see more about how that network switch works. We did just film a video on it. We'll put a link to that in the description below. The final thing we can possibly do to upgrade our little Sonos port would be to replace the power supply. The Sonos port does come with a power supply. It's this little, you know, surface mount, switch mode power supply. These things are known to produce a bit of noise 
and infect your system. So we're going to replace that with a better one. So let's get that thing out of there and stop it contaminating our clean power supply and get a $4,700 linear power supply with another $6,525 power cable and two $780 DC cables which are going to power both the Sonos port and the network switch. That's another $12,785 worth of upgrades, bringing the total amount spent upgrading this little $799 Sonos port to $76,725. Roll the clip. What I've got here is a Nordost Q-Source. This is a linear low voltage power supply developed by Nordost. It was originally designed for powering uh, their Q-Point um, harmonizers but it does have a couple of low voltage outputs here, one of which we can use to power the QNET and one to power the Sonos. These are different voltages, the Sonos runs at 12 volt, this one runs at 9 volt, but we do have these special cables here that come off of them. That A and B output there are configured to the correct voltage, as well as the fact that we're powering these off of a nicer power supply than what comes with these guys out of the box. We're also removing out of the system any noise being generated by those surface mount digital power supplies, so we're actually kind of getting a two for one upgrade in some respects. Plug this guy in here, and this Lemo connector only goes in one way. There you go, so that's them powered up, and now, this is the advantage, now we don't have these guys, which are generally known to produce a bit of noise in the system and infect the rest of the sound system. Now we don't have them plugged in doing that anymore, we're using all linear power supplies throughout the whole thing. I, I hate to say it, but I reckon that was one of the biggest differences. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's hard to tell because we've obviously, you know, accumulated up to yeah. the point we're at now. Mm. So I'm not saying I think the power supply on its own would make more difference than the DAC, but I think the but going in that order, it seemed like the power supply made the most difference. Yeah, that's just the opposite of the cumulative effect. Yeah, but obviously like we've got a $15,000 DAC there and that power supply is 4,700 bucks or so, so it's totally different values. Mm. But I feel like that kind of shows you could get away with maybe a cheaper DAC, maybe something along the lines of two or $3,000 and then do the switch and the power supply and achieve, you know, you know, your money's a bit better focused on the power and the ethernet side of things rather than the digital to analog conversion. Yeah, it was a lot, a lot smoother, a lot more three dimensional. Separation was better again. Yeah. And the background was way quieter. Yes. There was far less of that sort of internet noise. Yeah, certainly if I walked in here blindfolded, I, I wouldn't be able to tell at the current state that I was listening to a Sonos port yeah. with all its upgrades that you've just given it. Now, obviously I'm not suggesting that everyone with a Sonos port go out and spend 75K on upgrades just to make the things sound good. This was just meant to be a bit of fun, kind of an experiment for us here at Soundline, just to see exactly how much sound quality we could possibly squeeze out of a cheap product given an unlimited budget. So thank you for watching this fun little video, guys. If you did enjoy or you want to see more videos like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe so that you see our next video. Takatiano.